Hello and welcome to week 12 of MSK Unknown Case Series. This is a fantastic case, so I want to go ahead and get started. We have a frontal view of the pinky, an x-ray radiograph, and we have an abnormality that's pretty obvious at the fifth proximal phalanx. And the question that I have for everyone is, what's the most likely diagnosis here? Is this a case of myositis ossificans? Is this a nora lesion? Is this an osteochondroma? Or is this a surface osteosarcoma? And of course, a surface osteosarcoma would include a parosteal osteosarcoma or a periosteal osteosarcoma. So I'll give you a couple seconds to kind of ponder on these cases. Well, what we're seeing here is we're seeing a disordered mass uh, that has, it's, it's ossified. I mean, we can see actually trabeculae coursing through this lesion. It's arising from the sort of metadiaphysis of the bone. There's some surrounding soft tissue swelling here as well. We don't see uh, any periosteal reaction, uh, no major aggressive features here, pretty narrow zone of transition. I can literally take a pencil and outline the, you know, the borders of this lesion. Uh, and, you know, importantly, there's no, you know, medullary continuity with the bone. Um, and, you know, this is not really within the soft tissues. It's actually an uh, excrescence arising from the bone itself. So the best answer in this case would be a nora lesion, also known as a bizarre BPOP or a bizarre parosteal osteochondromatous proliferation. This is actually a uh, disordered mass that comprised of bone, cartilage, and fibrous tissue. Typically occurs in, you know, patients in their third or fourth decade, usually in their thirties, it can present as, you know, mild or minimal pain. It can grow or enlarge. Uh, and, you know, it can certainly be symptomatic. Now, the importance of this lesion is not to confuse it with some of the other things in the differential, like myositis ossificans, osteochondroma, and a surface osteosarcoma. So this is not myositis ossificans because that usually happens in the setting of trauma, right? We usually see, you know, ossification within the soft tissues, actually within the muscle, not really arising from the bone, right? And we would expect there to be a, a zoning pattern where there'd be more peripheral ossification or more mature ossification more peripherally that then becomes central later, right? So that's what the zoning pattern is of myositis ossificans. You know, this is really arising from the bone itself, making myositis ossificans less likely. An osteochondroma would be a consideration. We know that that's a benign uh, cartilaginous tumor, but there's a couple things that argue against it. First of all, this is not really metaphyseal. Uh, this is more, you know, diaphyseal, maybe metadiaphyseal, but certainly not purely metaphyseal. Uh, another characteristic of an osteochondroma is they usually point away from the joint. This is not pointing away or towards the joint, right? It's kind of neutral in position. And the other, th and the main thing is there's no medullary continuity with the bone. An osteochondroma always has medullary continuity with the underlying bone. This is actually, you know, coming, there's no, there's like no cleavage plane, like it's coming directly off of the, the bone and there's no continuity there. So making an osteochondroma much less likely. And then a surface osteosarcoma, you know, would be very, atypical or uncommon in the hand, right? You know, we almost never, I mean, never say never, but you know, that would be very rare for it to occur in the hand. And we also see no aggressive features, no periosteal reaction, no Cobman's triangle, uh, you know, no destruction of the underlying bone. Uh, so making surface osteosarcoma much less likely. So this is just a benign lesion, has no, you know, metastatic potential, nor a lesion, nor a lesion or a benign osteochondroma, bizarre parosteal osteochondroma with this proliferation. It's a disordered mass of bone, cartilage, and fibrous tissue. Um, you know, the treatment is surgical excision, but you know, actually more than 50% of them can recur after surgical incision, excision. So, you know, very important just, you know, to, to look at these and, you know, make sure that, you know, after you've done surgery, it's not growing anymore. So uh, hope you enjoy this case. I know this was a tough case, but I wanted to make this somewhat challenging. Stay tuned again next week for another super high yield case to learn musculoskeletal radiology. Thank you so much for your attention.